How important is uh, shamatha developing vipassana? Now that's a great question. So uh, there's two ways of developing vipassana. One is through generating really damn good shamatha. This is one way. Creating intensely stable mental condition, right? So shamatha increases our stillness of mind and our ability to concentrate. If you uh, increase that greatly, let's say you re reach the second or third stage of mental abiding, and then you have a very good chance of recognizing the true nature because the mind is very focused and still. The problem with uh, understanding the essential nature of mind is that we're always vacillating. You know, in the Hindu tradition, we talk about this chitta vritti, which means the mind is fluctuating, right? Fibrillating. And, uh, and so without stillness and without concentration, then it's very difficult to gain this insight. So that's one way. And the other way, well, it's divided into two, let's say. Uh, there's the way of the Dzogchen and there's the way of the Mahamudra. And in the Dzogchen, then what they do is they teach the view. So they teach the view, how things are. And the way that the Dzogchen uses language is actually quite poetic. So it's not, it's not very technical sounding. It all sounds really beautiful and poetic. And so they, you teach the view and then by repeatedly kind of focusing on this view, and then you look for insight and you get these sudden moments of insight. And uh, it's not like you'll just go, oh, that's where, that's it, that's it over there. It's not like that. You get kind of these little glimpses that you don't understand, uh, but they kind of persist. And the more that you do that, then eventually you might have a, a sustained recognition of the true nature. In the Mahamudra tradition, what we do is we use meditation. So we use all these different types of meditation techniques, right? Uh, and then use those as a springboard to come to recognize the true nature. So in terms of Arthur's question, you don't actually need good shamatha for vipassana. Developing shamatha first is a way of recognizing this insight. And also you can develop insight through these techniques of the view or through meditation without developing shamatha. But what is certain is that once you have recognition, then you need to remain in that. So at that point, once you have recognition, well, you're going to need to develop your shamatha because you need to be able to focus on that, remain focused on that. And of course, your kleshas, your negative habitual tendencies, are always going to be drawing you away from the true nature, right? You've recognized the way things are, but you've got these bad habits and they're always drawing you away. It's just like somebody who's addicted to cigarettes. They know it's bad for them. It's going to kill them. The doctor tells them it's going to give them cancer, etc. cetera. Uh, but they get this urge and they just go to grab a cigarette, right? It's kind of like that. We're addicted to samsara. So uh, you could recognize insight without any shamatha. I mean, it can happen just through symbols or certain causes and conditions, like something really bad happens to you or near-death experience. And you could, oh, you could recognize it, you know? But once you've recognized it, you've got to do something with it. You still have to erode your negative habitual tendencies. You've got no choice. And so at that point, you need to develop your shamatha. But there's something else here. And that's because focusing on the true nature as your object is a far more powerful meditation for developing shamatha than focusing on a candle or focusing on the breath. So we could spend years and years and years focusing on a candle to still the mind. But once you have recognition, you can spend one session, you know, they say like one instant of resting in the true nature is more powerful than eons of positive karma. So, but you could get the wrong idea and think that, well, I'll just go for the direct path, right? I'll just go for recognition first. It's not easier. It's taught to be more difficult. So you could just waste a lot of time. And then you don't have shamatha and you don't have an insight either, right? You don't have this, either of them. You can go shamatha and you can go vipassana. So the best thing to do is to spend a lot of time on your shamatha meditation regardless, because it's always going to benefit you. As I said before, even if you're focusing on a mistaken object, it's still beneficial to your shamatha, as long as you don't cling to it as being the, the real deal. If you cling to this, sort of, you get bliss in your mind, and you think, oh, that's the true nature, and you focus on it, and you think that's it, then you'll never look any further, right? Um, but if you're focusing on it, all the while you're developing your mental acuity and your stillness. How can having a more clear and concentrated mind help with insight? Like I said, it doesn't help insight. In fact, insight doesn't depend on any of these things. You know, you could be foggy. You can be asleep. Somebody who's got really good insight meditation can fall asleep. You know, 
somebody who understands meditation on, let's say they're meditating with their lama, and their lama's meditating, he kind of dozes off. Somebody who understands meditation will think, ooh, he's doing something special there. But somebody who doesn't understand meditation will be thinking, oh, look at him, he's falling asleep. He tells us we have to stay awake. So it's hard to explain, but uh, once you have insight, then that insight applies to everything, right? We say it's the true nature of all phenomena. It's the essence of everything, right? It's the nature of mind. So it's the nature of mind when it's distracted. It's the nature of mind when it's focused, when it's clear, when it's unclear. In fact, these notions of clarity and a sort of dullness don't apply once you understand what the true nature is. So the short answer is, well, it doesn't matter if you have insight, but how are you going to get insight? That's the problem. So my suggestion to you is spend a hell of a lot of time on your shamatha and be very diligent. And don't listen to people who are just telling you, you know, oh, it doesn't matter. You don't, you're already Buddha. You don't have to do anything. They've misunderstood, you know. They're just repeating a lot of garbage they've heard that they don't understand. And if you follow that, you're not going to get anywhere. I mean, if you're a really neurotic person who's got a lot of anxiety and you think too much and somebody tells you, just calm down, it's fine. It's pretty much the same as saying, you're a Buddha already, don't worry. You know, it's a, it's a good way to start, you know, uh, start off with being less kind of neurotic. But if you're serious about what you want to do, uh, then um, you have to put your put the effort in. There's no other way, you know. Uh, if somebody can tell me, you know, just take it easy, you don't need to do anything, I'm, I'm not going to listen to them. You know, I know that's just going to be a waste of time. Just put my feet up. So the insight is independent of any sort of stability. Yes, it is. But once you have insight... Well, you need to rest in it. You need to remain with that. So you need stability. Yeah, You could recognize the true nature of mind and just be like wandering around like a sort of, you know, a kid in a candy shop. And it's not going to get you anywhere, right? We've been doing that for since the beginning of this time. And in fact, uh, this insight is continually arising in every moment. And we don't recognize it. It doesn't do us any good, you know. It's not like it's something that has to be invented or developed. It's there. Now, I said before, then there's two, right? There's this placement meditation of shamatha. That's conditioning. That's what we call conditioning. This is something that um, this Jagara was talking about in meditation. And then there's insight. Well, insight is really about, or this means of developing insight, is really about deconditioning. So there's two. The shamatha is about conditioning yourself to stillness and focus. And insight is about removing these thick layers of conceptual imputations, these mistaken ideas. And to do that, there's all kinds of different techniques. And it doesn't depend on just focusing on something. Uh, but using a focal object that's helpful helps you to center your mind. 